Hello and welcome to another episode of How to Be a Great GM. We're currently in our series exploring how to deal with different size groups. And today we're talking about dealing with the big one. How to deal with groups bigger than five, six, seven, eight, nine, and maybe even ten players. How do you handle a group that is so overwhelming? A GM is on his toes when dealing with a group of four or five. How is she supposed to cope with a group double that size? Well, often at conventions we sit at tables with six players, which is pretty big. Sometimes we get that crazy urge though to have just a big old party of people sitting around the table and uh, we think it's going to be a great day for everyone. Some basic maths for every body at the table. If an adventure of four should take an hour, for every extra body, add an extra 20 minutes of game time. So if you've got five people, suddenly you're spending an hour and 20 minutes to do something that would normally have taken an hour. If you've got 10 people, well, you can do the maths. Everything just slows down. It's the exact opposite of role playing with a group of one or two. Now you have committees that are being formed to, de to debate decisions, and that can really slow things down. So how do we as game masters change that? How do we make sure that everyone doesn't fall asleep or die of boredom while subcommittee B is debating on whether or not we should raise shields and fire weapons on that Kilrathi vessel? Well, there are a couple things that you can do. And these are the things that I've experienced and practiced in my own uh, gaming sessions. The first one is this rule. What are you doing? Tell me. No, nope, your character is busy contemplating what they're going to do for this round. Next person, what are you doing? This is what I call the five second rule. And if you can't answer what your character is doing in this much time, which is the general time frame for a round within a game or a turn within a game session, you don't know what your character is doing because your character doesn't know what your character is doing. If you're not sharp enough to say, oh, I cast lightning bolt, oh, I hit it with my sword, oh, I block, oh, I dodge out the way, then I'm sorry, you cannot participate in this round. You're busy, you're mind boggled by what's going on. Your character is anyway. If the player is, certainly the character will be as well. So the five second rule comes in really handy and usually you won't need to do it very often. Usually it's the first combat, the first kind of encounter. Everyone gets into the idea that they don't have a lot of time next. They don't have a lot of time to make decisions next. They really, really have to focus on what they're doing next, which brings us to the next point that I want to talk about next. And that is initiative. Now, initiative or action order or order of events or running order or however your game orchestrates or organizes the character's turns within a combat. Usually there's some kind of mechanic and if there isn't, you're going to introduce one for working with big groups. So the initiative order, the turn order, and if your system doesn't have it, have everybody roll a six-sided dice. The one with the highest number is the one who acts first and then you just work it down in descending order until the very last person acting as a one. If people roll the same number, they're acting at the same time, but whichever one's sitting closer to you acts first. That's the easiest way of doing it. You work out your initiative order and you maintain it both during combat and out of combat. Because what that'll allow you to do is when you're moving through the player base, the big problem that we have is that we're not making one-on-one -on -one connections with everybody sitting around the table because there's so many of them. And the quieter players, we might miss out altogether if we're not focused on exactly how to make contact with each one of them. So by jotting down their turn order or their initiative during combat, out of combat, you can keep that same number or have them make a new role if you really want them to. But then you can say, right, John, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And then when you come back, you go through that same order. So you become a lot more regimented. Well, this should help you in regular size games too, because it, it trains you to 
make everybody involved in your game rather than just picking up on the few who are very loud. In a large group, very loud people are going to struggle if there's more than one or two of them because they're going to be shouting over each other. Again, by making them have an initiative order in combat and out of combat, you can control. Well, yes, I hear what you're saying. I'm going to come back to you though because it's his turn to act. It's her turn to act. It's her turn to act. Now I'm on you. What are you doing? So it tries to help reduce the clutter, the noise that's going to be coming at you in this wall of player sound. Another thing to do, and this is something that you have to tell the guys way in advance of the game. If I ask you what you are doing on your turn, and you go, oh, um, I'm just going to cast a spell. Um, I've got it written down here somewhere. Uh, no, you're not. You fail. You can't do it. You can't act this round. Five second rule, mate. If you're going to take more than five seconds, whether it's in game or out of game character, to check up on a spell, sorry for you. I'm not slowing my game down for the other nine people whilst you busy dither about. You want to play a mage? That's fine. Have your notes in front of you and, and here's the kicker, prepare during other people's turns. Yes, it's nice to listen to the story, but that's not really what's happening in a combat type of situation. In a combat type of situation, everyone's fighting for their lives. You're not standing there watching, or maybe you are, in which case, um, please don't fight on my team standing there watching other people during combat and then realizing there's a giant orc in front of you that you have to suddenly stab quickly. No. Prepare your spells, know your powers, and there is no rule checking or power checking during the game. This is something to make very clear to your players. Guys, I'm making a rules call. You can make a little note on your character sheet and say, he made a bad call here, I want to go and check it out later. Later. Don't let your players bog you down in rules because only one player cares. The other eight or nine are busy sitting there going, can we carry on now, please? Because we really don't care. And neither should you move on. So don't check for rules. Don't check for spells. Either they know it or they don't. Move on. We're about time management when we're dealing with large groups. Which then brings us to the next point. Your story has to change. As we saw in a story on one-on-one, -on -one, the story was all about the character. Now, the story is all about the story, the quest, the adventure. And the characters are actually incidental. You should be able to drop them in and out without making any difference to the story whatsoever. Maybe you have one or two characters that you've chosen to be the hero characters for this particular adventure, but everybody else is really there simply because they are there. And if you want a very good example of someone who did this, and he was running one of the biggest adventures of all time, is just look at J.R.R. Tolkien and what he did when he had the Fellowship of the Nine. There's a giant party of people running around. But did we go off and explore Legolas's backstory and Gimli's backstory? No. No, we didn't. All that we did was we explored the story backgrounds of the characters involved with the central characters, which was Strider and Frodo, and the rest were wishy-washy and added in. I'm talking about the book, of course, not the movies, because that's Peter Jackson, and he could explore stuff because he decided that a longer session was better than a fast-paced session, which is what most of us are after. So... Choose one or two characters, make the adventure around them, but make the story as big and as generic as you can so that the rest of the guys can fit in, drop in, drop out as they need to. Now, before we finish off, I do want to talk about one concept that has been bandied around uh, between a lot of the conversations that have been happening online. And one of them is, what about two GMs or three GMs to run these parties? Well, technically speaking, if you have two GMs and nine players, that's one GM and four players and one GM and five players, respectively, playing their own games. And there's nothing wrong with that. In my experience, though, if you want two GMs to sit around a table running this gigantic group, two GMs won't work. It won't work because timing is a problem. I'm busy trying to get this group over here sorted out. The other GM is trying to get that group sorted out. We're still at the same table. It's messy. It's noisy. They're taking longer. I'm taking shorter time, whatever the case might be. So there's an issue there. My style is different to his style. So when players swap, 
their characters from one camp to the other, if we've split the party up or however it might work. There's a different feeling in terms of how we're describing stuff. And rewards are different too. I might hand out more cash or magical items or energade than my fellow GM. And we can try and sync it up, but again, we don't want to spend more time chatting with each other on how we're going to do it than working with our players. What does the work is one GM and an assistant. Now the assistant can prep maps, they can find rules notations, they can run little side quests where the party splits up and goes off to discover something else whilst you're running the main story. So if you really wanted my opinion and you want to have multiple people running the game, a GM and an assistant can't go wrong. Well, I hope these have been helpful in getting you to think a little bit more in terms of how to run large groups and how to make the most out of your session. I can't say that I find it particularly entertaining running a massive group because there isn't that story emphasis which I so enjoy. Anyway, keep those questions coming, keep those comments coming. I love the discussions that we keep having online. And until, oh, 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 I'll get shouted at. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, or the other way around. And until next time, happy gaming.